Welcome to everybody. My name is Marek Dąbrowski and I represent uh, three academic institutions, Prugel Brussel, Higher School of Economics in Moscow and Case Center for Social and Economic Research in Warsaw. The topic of my presentation are the factors determining Russia long-term growth rate. And I will um, discuss the phenomenon of growth slowdown after the global financial crisis since 2012. Then the role of demographic challenges and slow productivity growth. And then I will um, analyze uh, in more details uh, various factors which may contribute to uh, slowing productivity growth like oil dependence, the state footprint in the economy, institutional deficiencies, and the role of external political and economic relations. Let me start from the overview of growth record in this century in Russia, and we see that there were quite impressive uh, results before the global financial crisis, deep decline during the global financial crisis, then some recovery, but very shortly, practically since 2013, slowing down and uh, another dip related to uh, 2015, consequences of oil price decline, and of course, um, the next one related to COVID-19 in 2020. But um, we must understand that, that uh, the global boom of the early and mid 2000s, which was underpinned by globalization, revolution in information and communication technologies, continuous peace dividend after the end of Cold War, lax United States monetary policy, and financial depending. Uh, all this translated into record high commodity prices. Um, and uh, this fueled very much Russian economic growth. Then we uh, saw that there are some, some of these factors were unsustainable, as demonstrated by global financial crisis. On the top of this, Russia enjoyed post-transformation growth recovery after the decade of transformation related output decline 1980s and also in this period Russia enjoy favorable demographic trends. To better understand the, the roots of the current growth problems we look in three factors of uh, neoclassical growth theory, labor, investment, and total factor productivity. And when we, uh, st we start from labor, and we see that the um, number of um, the population, working age population increased until 2010 approximately, and then started to decline. It will continue to decline practically to uh, 2060 by quite a rapid rate. So this is one factor which must have impact on uh, growth rate of the, any economy, including also Russian economy. So very often uh, omitted in the analysis. Let's look for the second factor, investment. Uh, we see this is the blue line that on average, the investment rate with all fluctuation, business cycle fluctuation related to global financial crisis to oil price fluctuation, but nevertheless, the, uh, on average, this investment rate uh, to GDP increased and basically is higher than some other transition economies. It's not so high as China, for example, but it's well over 20% over of GDP. And uh, interestingly, it's still lower 
continuously lower than gross national saving uh, rate. So not all sources of, of financing investment are used in Russia and uh, Russia continues to have capital outflow. I will come back uh, shortly to this question. Um, but this is not problem of the deficit of domestic resources for uh, for investment. It is also not question of, of, of the rate of investment. It's rather the question of um, effectiveness of this investment. Unfortunately, I don't have good statistics of the um, total factor productivity growth and investment effectiveness, but I have labor productivity and we see that it's declining continuously. So the basically it's close to zero in um, the second half of, uh, uh, of 2010 or so even uh, entire 2010 decade. And now let's, um, so basically the Summing up of this part of the analysis, we see that there is problem with declining labor, uh, um, supply of labor, and is a problem with declining productivity in national economy. And now to, to explain the declining productivity, let's look for a few sub factors. One of them, uh, one of them is uh, high dependence on, on oil production and export. And we see that while Russia is less dependent than for example, Gulf countries, or even Kazakhstan or Azerbaijan, uh, it's still between five and 10% of GDP, the share of oil rent in GDP. So it's quite substantial. And it explains many uh, many uh, phenomena in, in the Russian economy, in many problems of this economy. Then another problem is the contribution of state-owned enterprises to GDP. In 1990s, Russia was one of the leaders on the speed of privatization and not always was optimal variant of this of, uh, uh, privatization, but at the beginning of this century, it private sector accounted to, to uh, some 70% of GDP, according to estimates of European Bank of Reconstruction and Development, but then started to increase as the, what is here demonstrated by estimates by, of the Gaidar Institutes. And there are some fluctuations dependent on oil and gas prices, but the trend is increasing. So this is one of the problems which have impact on productivity. Another is business climate. And there are several international rankings which demonstrate that Russia is not the country with most business friendly and investment friendly environment. Here is one of them is Heritage Foundation Index of Economic Freedom. And we, we see that, that Russia in 2018 occupied um, uh, the 107 place. So basically in the second half of this ranking, it's some improvements compared with previous years, but, but not not um, uh, big improvement. And where, then we see that there are several areas uh, where uh, is real problem. The scores are low, like investment freedom, financial freedom, uh, government integ integrity, and others. All this have impact on ca uh, capital movement. Here we have statistics of private uh, net capital inflow outflows, positive values that are outflows, negative uh, inflows, net inflows. And we see that basically all, we're only two years of net inflow, uh, private capital inflow, 2006, 2007. And um, especially in after 2007, we have very large uh, value of uh, private capital 
outflow from Russia, especially in crisis years like 2008 or 2014. And this is very worrying uh, uh, signal um, uh, demonstrating that uh, enterprising investors do not consider um, the business climate in Russia as, as friendly and, and conducive to investment decision. Finally, there is geopolitics. I will not discuss in details the um, Ukrainian conflict and the related sanction counter sanction. At the, uh, in 2015, IMF estimated uh, that they uh, could have impact of um, a negative impact in the range of one one point five percent of Russian annual G uh, GDP. It may be disputed, but nevertheless, this impact is without any negative impact is without any doubts. But in addition to all this, is the, um, there are cost of Ukrainian conflict itself, cost of integration of Crimea into Russian economy, and losses in trade with Ukraine. Um, uh, beyond this, uh, conflict uh, also uh, um, uh, boosted uh, autarkic tendencies and economic nationalism in Russia, uh, deterioration in relation with the United States, uh, European Union, and other advanced economies, which harms trade and investment relations, technology import cooperation in the sphere of research development and others. There is also increasing role of security and law enforcement agencies which um, additionally deteriorate business climate. And there, there are relatively high military uh, spending, which crowd out spending on human capital, another important growth factor. And here we see that, that the size of military spending, which is um, higher, sometimes much higher than, uh, uh, for example, in Europe on average, and which exceed spending both on education and uh, health. Summing up, it's clear that because of the, the role of demography, economy of Russia cannot grow at the pace recorded in the early um, and mid 2000s, but it can grow faster than, than now. But this faster growth requires far going structural, market uh, base, and institutional reforms, touching also political system and international relations. Thank you for the attention. Here is the full paper which, uh, which explains more in details my, my presentation. Thank you very much.